McDavid. Moves in, McDavid goes upstairs! What a goal! Hey guys, how's it going? It's Etanius here. Welcome to episode number 8 of this NHL 20 Draft to Glory franchise mode with the Reading Royals. Today, guys, we are going to be jumping into the 2022-23 season, really just getting through the sim here. Um, I mean, we do have a certain kind of group of players we are targeting. That group of players will be forwards, mainly centers, because when we look through our team and kind of just our overall uh, depth as far as a franchise goes, I would definitely say that... Uh, that uh, our weaknesses are in um, our forward group, especially our centers. Like if we look, yeah, e e e. But you can see strengths are goalie prospects. For defense, the defensive prospects are neutral. Um, and then, yeah, there's really just like we we don't have great centers, especially for the future. So, I mean, as of right now, we also have San Jose's pick, which is not ideal um we might be proposing a trade here to try and move some players just to you know kind of get our team uh projected in the right direction as far as players for the future goes i mean the only players we really have the option to move right now would probably consist of tony d'angelo even though he is worth seven million a year and then uh, Connor Sheary, who's worth $6 million a year, I'm pretty sure, yeah. So those are kind of our two options that we are looking to move here. And uh, we're going to try to find a trade, but overall I don't think that the, uh, that the trades are going to really go through here. Obviously it's a pain in the butt to try and use the trade finder. I am using this recommendation of, um, what do you call it, of using uh, the trade or the picks here to, um, what's the word? I am using that recommendation to clear the trade block before making a find trade request. Anyways, uh, we are going to try to find a trade here now, and hopefully we can find something for Connor Sherry or, um, who's the other guy? I just forgot his name, um, or Tony D'Angelo, but really those are our only viable trade options right now. Freaking Rogers is up to a 68. Mink is up to a 70. That's what you like to see. No trade offers for Sherry. Uh, what about Bodker? Because he's not in our lineup at the moment and he has some value. No trade offers found for Mikhail Bodker either. What about, uh, where's his name? Tony D'Angelo. It's got to be something for D'Angelo. Nothing. Okay, so the, the trade finders is broken. Um, but what we will be trying to do is take a bunch of cap off of... Um, we will be trying to take a bunch of cap off of other teams. Uh, trades or teams in exchange for really just a better player and some picks. So let's see. A lot of these teams actually do want um, Connor Sherry. Um... Let's see, maybe we send... Okay, wait, where did we just trade... Uh, what's his name? Uh, the defenseman, right-handed defenseman. Um, shoot, I can't remember. Um, Jovanovski, where do we trade Jovanovski? Because if we can get him back in exchange for a guy like Sherry, I will be incredibly happy with that. Um... I honestly forgot where we traded him. And I'm sure some of you guys are sitting here like, oh, you traded him to here and know exactly where he's gone. Tampa Bay. Okay, yeah, right. All right, we traded him to Tampa. He's 24, though, already, so that's not spectacular. Okay, so if we can go and acquire Richard Jovanovsky, maybe send, like, I don't know. Um, we could pick up. They got Gove still, too. That's the other crazy part. Um, but no, if we can pick up Jovanovski. God, Tampa's good. Shit. 
plus Tampa's first. Uh, I don't know if we want Tampa's first. Maybe we go with like their third and Arizona's fourth and maybe like a sixth rounder as well. And Jovanovski because we really only have San Jose's extra pick and then everything else from four to or three to seven even is fair game. Um, so they do want Connor Sherry. But at the same time, they would be over the salary cap. So we need to find a really bad contract in this team and trade for it. Unfortunately, they don't have a ton of options when it comes to trading for players. So, yeah, that's not great. Um, okay, Tampa's probably not the best option to trade with. So who actually has enough cap that they can almost uh, withhold $6 million here? I feel like Colorado probably could. I just get that feeling that they would actually work out pretty well here for what we're looking for. Who is this guy? Scott Douglas. Oh, they drafted him early. Is he a sniper? No, he's a two-way forward. Okay. Jeez. Um, so maybe we go for a guy like... I mean, we could pick up Comfer as well as like... That, that's really it. Um, oh, they have no picks either. That's the other. Okay, that's another problem. So that's not going to work. Um, how's Dallas doing, man? I will take Dallas's first and third in exchange for Sherry and San Jose's first. That's a pretty fair trade, but I kind of want to get something back. Besides what they've offered, Hanzik's a nice pick. I remember they drafted him, yeah, just a couple years ago. Um, okay, maybe Vanek? I, I think Thomas Vanek fit on our second line. Okay, so we can grab the first and the third in exchange for Shiri and San Jose's first because San Jose's been a good team. And really, if this is, like, if this is what makes a difference in... How they perform. You know what? Hang on. I want to try something here because I've got a question here that involves Mikhail Bodker or Tony D'Angelo as well. So they don't want Bodker. They do want D'Angelo, but I just don't think there's enough value or return there. How are our picks looking next year? Next year we've got. Boston's first, Nashville second, and third. Jeez, okay. So, we might be better off just, yeah, grabbing a third this year, and then can we pick up a ton of cap from somewhere? Like, just, who's getting paid way too much for their value? Nobody really on this team. I mean, Kulikov, yeah, he's doing pretty bad for his contract. Um... Honestly, we might be safer just holding on to San Jose's pick there and not trading and then maybe even signing another player for cap because like it's it's difficult to trade away this much when you already have such huge cap space. Like what we need to do, what we actually need to do is go over to free agency here and sign just like the highest rated player available like Ang here. Yeah, we could sign him. Jonathan Ang. Okay. Um Yeah, if we could sign if we could sign Jonathan Ang, then we probably like we won't just do a two-way con we'll do a one-year contract and we'll offer him like let's see half of 31 is going to be 15 million. So if we offer him 15 million for one year, then he should easily accept that. And the nice part about this is when we do this, then we don't take salary cap penalties on other players and certain guys that we don't want to pay would end up getting a ton of money. Like that's not something we want to do. So just signing these guys for single year contracts for 15 million each, we can sign Mason as well here, even though they're probably not going to play at all. But we sign these guys for 15 and 16 million 
then that completely covers our cap and then we have no cap penalties which is kind of the main thing I'm worried about here because if we have guys like uh, what's his name Dylan Hunt was on a really nice contract he was like let's see yeah he's 8.8 million if that gets bumped up to like nine and a half million or 10 million that's not good as same with Bryce Anthony and same with like any guys that have gotten paid here recently if they take cap bumps that makes everything so much more difficult for us so yeah just really don't want to have that happening I think one guy that would be worth trading here would be um Mikhail Bodker I don't know where we're going to trade him but we could probably um we could probably get a third rounder for him I would think maybe like a third and a second in a future year maybe even like that's that would be a good trade for me in my opinion and then we'll have a couple million free uh where where did he just go Budker there he is okay so who actually wants him that's the first question who has cap and wants him um Montreal wants him okay that's that'll work um and they've got the cap space to do it so let's try to go Montreal's third rounder this year and then I feel like we have picks in 2025 what about 2020 you know what if we can grab their first in 2026 man that would be that would be spectacular so next year 2024 we have seconds so we can't take that but Okay, wait, hold on. Okay. 2024, we have picks. Jeez, okay. Um, <laughs> we have way more picks than I thought. So yeah, 2026, if we can pick up picks then, like if we can pick up a first and a second in 2026 from Montreal, that would be spectacular because we literally have nothing there. And honestly, we can even take on... A guy like, um, let's see, who's got no value and a lot of money. Shea Weber. Ooh. <laughs> um, preferably not, but maybe. But the other problem here is that we're trading way too much, or Montreal's giving up way too much. So, okay, maybe not Byron, but maybe um, Delzato. Delzato would be better. You can go Delzato on a first in 2026 for Bodker. That is sick. That is a really nice trade as we pick up another first rounder for really not much. And um, honestly, we're just going to sim to the regular season now. I want to check out the draft class here before we hit the full season sim and uh, move on from there, really. So, yeah. Um, gonna have the trial conversation here with uh, our coach and you know it's same old same old here um, with you know let's see how uh, Marcel Audet can play until a certain period and it's like he's gonna stay in the NHL we just simply don't have any other players uh, there you go our cap problems are solved there and it's funny because you know, usually you'd think oh cap problems mean a team has got too much cap no no we have not enough uh, we needed to add an extra 31 million to our cap space and uh, that is what we did there with Jonathan Eng and I can't even remember who the other guy was and I just saw his name on the screen um, but yeah no we we, uh, we are really set up here and I think we're gonna be looking good moving forward I mean obviously this is probably gonna be another rough season where we don't end up placing very high in the standings I'm totally okay with that because it means we will get better shots at this draft um and looking at this draft we got another franchise center in here in donovan leach uh plays like wayne gretzky which is interesting but honestly i am just as interested in a guy like damon montgomery here because really what we are looking for in this team now is just forwards that's all we want is just forwards and uh our defense, I, that is such a funny name. I love that. Zachary McMuffin. And apparently he's NHL ready too. Damn. Okay. And our coat or our scout has him as high as seventh. What about Trip here? Corey Trip is ranked ridiculously high. Jesus. Okay. Um. Yeah, no, our 
the scouts definitely kind of know what they're doing when it comes to player value and potential and rankings. So I'm trusting my scouts on this one because they have been pretty damn good so far. So I like to see those ratings, especially when our scout rank is higher than what the uh, central scout ranking is. That's always good to see. And you never know where it's actually going to place guys here. So, you know, just getting some quick scouting done here before the season really starts. And, uh, I mean, should be should be a pretty good season here. Um, I'm just looking forward to seeing what kind of positions our draft picks land. Because, really, that's the only thing we can look forward to as a team for the next couple of seasons. Just based on the fact that we really don't have a lot of options. You can see how delayed my Elgato is compared to like I I put the controller down like a solid like five to ten seconds ago. And it's just not loading well here right now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reboot my Elgato, see if uh that works better. And then we will jump into a full season sim. So at this point guys we kind of don't want to land any more franchise players simply because we want our guys that we have to grow and to you know fill out their roles as you know this is this is an entire franchise line here uh, with Anthony Hunt and Zachary that's gonna be a really nice line moving forward and I really just want them to grow more than anything on defense again we could probably use one more elite defender I would say but when we really look at the depth that we have in this team like we have elite defenders coming up here we've got guys like Michael Mink who's going to be just fine. We got guys like Francisco Rogers, who's going to be a freaking beast in the future. And then we have depth guys here too, that will be able to play in the NHL in a season or two, like Frederick Olas and uh, Igor Korolyuk. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just excited to see what this team can do. Obviously, uh, Bobkov is moving up through the ranks here too, slowly. But uh, yeah, no, the real kind of focus here is going to be on guys like Kim Nicolas, see how he can play. Same with Devin Scavello. I would really like to see some growth this season from him because last season was just an off year, a down year, and he did not grow at all, really. Um, and then the other guys that are pretty obvious here would be Yaroslav Askarov, as we want to see him jump up in rating if possible, as well as um, the other big name here would be Joey Yakimowicz as he needs to grow. He's 24 years old and he hasn't done anything with his career so far. So yeah, a little disappointing with those guys, but I'm expecting some kind of growth here this season. So we are going to jump into a full season sim. Hopefully this, uh, this draft class can kind of start to come together here a little more with our scouting. Obviously our main target would be Damon Montgomery at this point as we do want a center that isn't franchise because Donovan Leach is just going to kind of shine if we get him into this team and we'll probably turn the team around to be honest but yeah I don't think that's what we want I think we want a secondary line kind of elite center like Montgomery who can come in make a difference but won't be like the star of this team I think that's more what we want and yeah, we'll just see how this season goes. So I will be back with you guys at the end of the 2022 slash 23 season. Select it. Fuck me. Okay. So guys, we are going to try to make this trade here. Uh, we're attempting to send Connor Sheary and San Jose's first rounder which has no value right now because they've won 29 or 30 games um, to the Anaheim Ducks in exchange for their first rounder this year and Ryan Getzlaff who is on his last year and that's rejected okay that's not spectacular um what else can we toss into this deal I don't really want to throw in any first or seconds because that just doesn't make sense um Yeah, this isn't spectacular with what they're requesting in return. Um, could we throw Zadorov in there as well? He wasn't a great pick last year. and Okay, they really don't want to give up their first. 
So let's try tossing a second rounder next year into this deal too. Let's throw, actually, yeah, let's throw um, Nashville's pick in there next year, the second rounder. That should get it done. Oh my god, Anaheim, really? You're going to be like this? Okay, so let's go second from Nashville and then a third from them the year after. That, okay, come on, come on. <laughs> Fuck, okay. Um, like right now, if they are in good shape, they're not in bad shape. They're actually, they're in really fucking good shape, man. How the hell, how the hell is he 92 rated? I'm sorry. Like, I, he's a good player and all, but like, what the hell? <laughs> Buffalo should be winning way more games. Do they not have a goalie? Yeah, that's what it is, is they don't have a goalie. So maybe that's actually a smart deal to go with in Vegas, because obviously we're not going to get Vegas' pick. It's too valuable. But if we could snag Buffalo's plus, like, a pick that, or a player that they don't want so we get some cap back, um, there's literally nobody. I want a forward, preferably. So a guy like uh, Victor Rask would not be bad. If we could do that, that would be good enough for me. I'd be happy with that. And that's rejected, of course. So let's try one second. And if they don't take the one second, then we're not doing this. Come on. Okay. Okay. I, I'm. It sucks because we're going to have to stick with... Um, we're going to have to stick with Vegas, or not Vegas, San Jose's pick, which is trash. Um, we're not going to land anything good with it. And that just essentially translates to we're not getting a top-end prospect in this draft at all. So, yeah, too bad. We're going to go to the end of the season. Hopefully we like just lose a bunch of games. That's all I can really hope for. As you can see, Liam Zachary has yet another spectacular season. He hits an 89 overall, so not terrible, especially for a 10th overall pick, man. He's doing really good, and he's one of the two players who averages over a point a game on our team this season. Actually, no, never mind. Uh, Bryce Anthony did average a point a game as well. Took 100 penalty minutes, though. Uh, 100. <laughs> Jeez, okay. So, um... Yeah, that 80 discipline really not serving him well. Funny enough, though, is that Liam Zachary only took 20 penalty minutes and his discipline's worse. So interesting there. But yeah, overall, um, you can see who is really performing for us. And it's essentially just the top line. Uh, Joey Yakimowicz puts up some really nice numbers for a first season in the NHL, but doesn't grow really. Um, Amir Ferguson... Puts up 32 points in his rookie year, so pretty solid. Not spectacular, but pretty solid. And yeah, this is really just the plus minuses were bad. Uh, looking at our goalies here, Askarov only wins 7 games, whereas Comrie wins 25, so definitely better there. Uh, looking at the entire league for goalies, Vasilevsky wins 42 games. Absolutely absurd. Uh, besides that, not too many crazy performances. As far as rookies go... Trevor Wong, there he is. I was waiting for him to kind of show up. Yakimowicz actually did all right in comparison to some of these much higher rated rookies like Atu Ratty, Alexander Barkov, and or Bobkov, sorry, not Barkov, Alexander Bobkov and uh, Trevor Wong. Um, moving further down the list, we do see, okay, Mason Shaw, but Shane Wright, that's a big name. Um, Briot, Briot Cruz, I don't know how to say that. Bright Cruz, I believe. Oh, yeah, they took him fourth in 2019 uh, when we ended up landing Dylan Hunt. But, yeah, as you can see, Ferguson in there and then Odette as well. You know, not spectacular seasons, but, oh, my God, really? He's already up to an 86? Carson Lambos, you monster. Like, that's higher rated than Ferguson. Jeez. All right, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we got a good shot at a lottery pick here. <laughs> Um, for the upcoming episode, but really, if it's not a top five, then it's not an elite, which is a little worrisome, especially with how the lottery tends to go. 
I mean, right where we're sitting, if we can maintain our pick, then we will probably land Montgomery, which would be about as good as we can get at this point. Um, a guy like Sacito could be. I doubt he's going to be an elite player, but you never know. And there's other guys in here too, like Fast. And uh, I mean, maybe there's options, but I get the feeling all those guys are just going to be top six forwards with, you know, better overalls, really. Um, looking through the rest of it, I don't really see anybody else who's going to be good to pick in this section of the draft. Um, big question marks on guys like Cole or Ellis, because it's really a question of are they ever going to turn out, or what's going to happen there. So, yep, definitely a lot of question marks in this draft still. We don't have a lot of like properly targeted players, I guess you could say. And, uh, yeah, we have no confirmed scouting assignments yet, really, so... Besides maybe like top six kind of guys. Actually, we do have two low elites there and low elite goalie and Anthony Delzato. Interesting. And then uh, Davis Hickey there as well is also going to be guaranteed. So we will pin those guys. Besides that, oh, 110. Okay. Bradley Nickel is actually at a really nice place there. But man, like this is just... Ugh. Draft classes are not going nearly as well as I had hoped, and that's not spectacular, so, yeah, um, we are just going to sim to just before the, uh, end of the regular seat, or the end of the off season, sorry, and, uh, my bet is going to be on, you know, knowing our luck, San Jose is probably going to win the cup, because we own their pick, that would just, that'd be how it would go, um, but no, I'm going to bet on either Chicago from the West or I'm going to say Tampa Bay from the East. I think Tampa is going to do ridiculously well. So let's see how this goes. All right. So this is the year where we are going to have a new contract coming up here. And there it is. So with this new contract, obviously, like, why would we sign with any other team when we have gotten the offer here for reading? And we've got our players. We know what we're working with. We have to go with reading. I mean, there's there's no reason why we wouldn't. So, yeah, um, we're going to take them. And wouldn't you know it, wouldn't you know it, you know, the one year where we have San Jose's first and second round picks, they win the freaking Stanley Cup. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, when you look at this from, like, a journeyman standpoint, San Jose Buffalo win the Cups back-to-back. -back. That's good for the league's kind of evenness. Grand Rapid wins their second Calder Cup here in just four years, so good for them. So now we can go and actually check out the awards. Uh, Liam Zachary up to a 90 overall. That is the highest rating we have seen from this team in a long time. Carolina won the Presidents there. San Jose wins the Clarence Campbell, and the Rangers make it from the East to win the Prince of Wales. Josh Hosang won the Art Ross. Uh, Alex Ovechkin wins the Hart. Norris goes to Carlson for the fourth year in a row. Holy crap. Hosang wins the Lady Bing. Trevor Wong, obviously, there won the Calder. Uh, Con Smythe went to Carlson. Vasilevsky wins the Vesna and the Jennings. Uh, it's just like Bobrovsky last year and Carter Hart the year before. Really, like, wow, okay. Um, Masterton goes to Dobson, okay. Uh, Jack Adams goes to Nashville's coach. The Selkie goes to Barkov here after O'Reilly won it three out of the last four years. Lindsay goes to Ovechkin, and the Rocket goes to Ovechkin. Josh Hosang, okay, can we just... I, I didn't actually show you guys... Um, the entire league scoring and where our guys kind of placed in comparison but yeah Hosang kind of crushed the league as a top six forward at 27 he's in his prime like what can you say um but yeah in comparison dear god Carlson scored 96 points 96 <laughs> okay um so that's what we're up against by the looks of it McDavid didn't even break 100 did he he broke yeah he had exactly 100 and then there were just three guys or four guys here that were way ahead of the rest of the pack. Kane, Crosby, Ovechkin, and Malkin, or Malkin, Hosang all scored 
over 110. So, yeah, um, definitely a bit of a crazy season when we look at it. Obviously, Liam Zachary's development has been kind of the biggest story here over the last two seasons or so, but um, it's looking all right, and really we don't have much longer left in this episode before we kind of call it quits here. Actually, I think we're just going to call it right here so we can check out the lottery next episode. Obviously, that's kind of the most exciting thing here is where are our picks going to land, but... Anyways, that is going to essentially be wrapping up this episode. We can check out, you know, the stats here. Ferguson up to an 86. You like to see that. Scavello up to an 83. And Nikulas and Odette both up one or two ratings there. Not much. Askarov up to an 80. Okay. Um, Yakimowicz up one. That is the biggest story right there is Francisco Rogers. Like, holy crap. Um, <laughs> I don't have any other way to put it. He just blew me away. Not just where he's drafted. Like, I mean, we can look at where he's drafted. Freaking third round, 66th overall. And he grew a whopping 13 ratings this season. So, yeah, definitely the most growth out of our entire team after Liam Zachary. And he is definitely a promising prospect on the blue line, especially as a right-handed shot in the system. Commissaric grew like crazy. Really, a lot of our players with potential did not grow so much. Bartlett did, uh, not playing in our team, which is good. Uh, let's see, who else? Jan Mizak is starting to show some potential, but not really that promising yet. Uh, Jilson grew quite a bit for where he was at. And besides that, looks like that's pretty much it. So yeah, um... That is our team. That is kind of our status going into this draft. Holy Jesus, the uh, San Jose Sharks crushed the Islanders there 9-1 um, in the final game. But, geez, that was way closer than it looked. Okay. Yeah, man, that was, uh, that was a surprisingly tight playoffs there for the most part. I mean, San Jose kind of had an easy walk through it right up until the finals, but good for them. Uh, they do get the win there, blow out the Rangers in Game 7. And that really wraps up this episode. So next episode, we will get into the 2023 NHL Entry Draft. We will see where our lottery pick lands. And it's going to be exciting. So anyways, that is going to be wrapping it up for this episode. If you guys are enjoying this series so far, please go down below, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and feel free to leave your comments because I love reading them. So that is going to be it for me. This is Etanios signing out, and see ya!